Hello, everyone. Welcome to the weekly live stream. I'm going to talk about metabolism today. I'm going to talk about some hormone stuff, but mostly metabolism. I mean, it's all related. Um, while I'm waiting for everybody to come on, if you're on and watching, it takes my stream about a minute or so to show everyone and show your comments, but feel free to drop into the chat where you're watching from. Um, so I'm going to do a little housekeeping first. First of all, I'm going to try to keep the live stream at about 40 minutes because I'm noticing if I go longer than 40 minutes, YouTube puts like 500 ads <laughs> on my videos. Um, and then I get a million comments of people really mad. So I'm going to try to keep it at 40. I'll say that now. And then um, my one of my sponsors, Let's Get Checked, who I talk about a lot. I'll even probably mention them today. Um, they now have a test for this um, thing going around, which I'm not going to mention because um, YouTube loves to <laughs> take your stuff down if you talk about it. Um, but they have a test for it. You do have to. All right. I'm seeing people come on. Hey, Becky. South Dakota, Southeast Georgia. Welcome everyone. All right, I see you guys. Yay, and, and drop in the chat if you're watching the replay where you're watching from. Um, but since they have this test for this little thing going around that everyone's getting um, or not getting, um, they have a test for it, but their, their testing of other things is a little tiny bit backed up right now. So if you have a test and you're like waiting on a result, you can always call them. You can call the number that's on your kit, and they're very, very, very helpful. Their customer service has been awesome. What is up, Carnivorous Beast? <laughs> um, I'm reading the chat. If you're watching replay, like, what? Carnivorous Beast? Um, Carnivorous Beast, actually, I'll show Carnivorous Beast. He just started a YouTube channel, a carnivore YouTube channel. So a little shout out, go over there, check out his YouTube channel, give him a subscribe, show some support. Yeah, yeah, um, that so-called thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And we got Grace in the house. What is up, Grace? Um, hello, Virginia, Arkansas. So anyway, let's get checked as a test for that now. So if that's something you're worried about, I actually ordered a couple of them. You have to go through kind of a screening um, to get them. But I ordered a couple just to have here. Um, but because of that, they're running the test now and some of their other tests are kind of backed up. So if you're waiting on a result, then you're just call them. And they're super helpful, super, super accommodating. So that's my housekeeping stuff um, for the day. And um, yeah, so welcome everyone to the live stream. I'm gonna talk about metabolism. Um, first, I'm gonna talk about how I broke my metabolism. Just for your reference, you know, something I always say with every single video is that we're also individual. You know, there are a lot of similarities between us, but going into any kind of way of eating, I think it's important to look at your health history, your metabolic history, all of that stuff that you've had going on your whole life. And um, I will say this often, I am not a doctor, a nutritionist, I am definitely not any sort of an expert. Pretty much everything that I talk about on here is just from me doing my own research and, you know, quote unquote biohacking. I don't know. I don't really love that, <laughs> that term, um, but it's really just me kind of biohacking to figure out um, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. So going into the carnivore diet, I started it uh, in 2019, very beginning of 2019, January. Good old New Year's resolutions. Uh, I was going to try it for 30 days, but uh, prior to that, um, I had done a ton of dieting and a ton, like my whole life, like I was in Weight Watchers as a child because I was very overweight as a child. My parents put me, well, it was my dad, my mom was like, whatever, feeding me like moon pies on the DL and RC Cola on the DL. Like my dad would take us to the diets and then my mom would like give us the candy. It was uh, <laughs> it's an interesting, interesting way to grow up. And what's up from Texas? Um, and yeah. Um, lovely lady says interested in this as I think I've screwed my metabolism up. A lot of us have. And the thing about where the society and just like life in general, this is really, it's very toxic. We have a lot of environmental pollutants. We have a lot of products that we use in our homes as I've done this, this whole diet. Like I've, um, you know, kind of 
weeded out a lot of products that I use, but a lot of that stuff can cause hormonal disruption because our metabolism is, uh, it's a hormonal process. And um, it also depends on the health of our liver, the health of our internal organs. Um, so number one, I did a lot of metabolic damage through chronic dieting over my life. Uh, number two, I was a very heavy drinker for many years, and I've talked about that um, extensively on my YouTube channel, but I did abuse alcohol for um, a few years after you know my daughter was diagnosed. I literally lost my coping skills and drank a lot of alcohol, and when you drink a lot of alcohol, um, you will wreck your liver. And your liver is extremely important um, in your metabolic health because if you can't detoxify um, hormones and pollutants and uh, chemicals and all that stuff, if you cannot um, detoxify that stuff, your body is not going to work properly. Your metabolism is not going to work properly. Yeah, and Lily says, so important to detox the cleaning products, especially the personal care products. Yeah, I'm down to literally um, one uh, cream, one face cream. It is a uh, fancy farm. I think if you scroll down in my information section all the way down to the bottom, there's a, a link that says Sarah's favorite carnivore tools. And on that list is a link to Fancy Farm Skincare. Um, it's like beef suet <laughs> that they've rendered down and uh, Bulgarian rose oil. And that's the only thing I use on my body. But I used to use all kinds of lotions with like chemicals, like you can't even read the ingredients list. Um, yeah. So that's the kind of metabolic day. and chronic dieting. A lot of us have chronically dieted. Like I said, I've done it since a kid. So uh, coming into the carnivore diet, I think I had a, a good amount of metabolic damage. And anytime that you go on a diet um, and restrict your calories, you're going to mess with your metabolism. So it's going to be harder and harder and harder for your body to uh, recover and for you to have the optimal hormone balance. So a few things that started happening to me when I started doing carnivore that I actually thought were like good things, it turns out they were not so good, is um, number one, uh, my resting heart rate was like super low. Now, I think it's important to have a baseline before you go into these, um, you know, carnivore or even keto. It's, it's very important to have a baseline. I always recommend people run lab tests. Uh, with a doctor, a full met, or you can use Let's Get Checked if you want to run it yourself. That link is always below the video. Um, but it's important to have baseline. And so um, I had a baseline from my Fitbit, and then I got an aura ring of what my resting heart rate was. So before I went carnivore, my resting heart rate was always in the 50s and very low 60s. That's resting heart rate for me. It's been that, you know, it's just typical for me. Um, let's see. And so when I started doing carnivore, my resting heart rate went way down. And I was like, oh, this is really good. Like, it's really good to have a <laughs> low resting heart rate. And my resting heart rate went from being in the like mid high 50s to low 60s to all the way down in the 40s. And then sometimes it would even go down into the 30s. <laughs> and I, you know, I did some research on it because I was like, oh, this is really good. I was like, yeah, super athletic people, people with high athletic performance, um, they will have those low resting heart rates and it's great, but that's not necessarily true. Um, it actually does mean that your metabolism is slowing down. So it is not necessarily a good thing. Now, when I switched to a high fat carnivore and I quit doing all fasting, and I'm gonna talk about fasting a little bit on here because my view on fasting is definitely controversial. It definitely doesn't match up with a lot of what's being said out in the keto and carnivore communities. But um, I will talk about the science behind why I believe what I believe. But I essentially quit doing all fasting, started eating like within 30 minutes of waking up, um, you know, getting three meals a day. I wasn't doing a bunch of snacking or anything like that, but my resting heart rate within probably a week was uh, back up to where it was when I started back in the um, 50s and low 60s. The other thing that was happening to me a lot um, that I just thought, well, it's just, you know, I, I really didn't know what to think of it is that I would stand up and then get super, super dizzy, like almost kind of black out. 
um, with that super low resting heart rate. Now that can also be histamine intolerance as well. You can get that vertigo type of thing. But as soon as I quit the fasting and I upped my fat and started eating, you know, the three meals instead of limiting myself to the one or two meals a day, that resting heart rate went back up to the point where I actually had to um, reset my aura ring because I was like, uh, it kept on telling me that my HRV was low. You know, now your HRV is another sign of a healthy metabolism and it's your body's ability to recover. So if you're and having an aura ring, is it the best way? There are other apps and things you can get for HRV, but I love the aura ring to test your HRV. So my HRV um, is in a good place now. Rest, so I wouldn't be necessarily worried if your resting heart rate goes up a little bit, as long as it's in those healthy ranges. Um, so the other thing that that switched over for me when I kind of went to a higher fat um, diet is that I stopped being uh, I was cold a lot. So my, and my body temperature was low. So I put in the um, description. And I, OK, let me read this. Anonymous guest says um, orthostatic hypertension. I have no idea. My blood pressure was always super low, too. So I've always had really low and it's my blood pressure is also low as well. So I don't know if that has anonymous guests. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with blood pressure. Like I said, I'm not scientist or expert or I'm just kind of telling you guys my biohacking um, and <laughs> self experiments here. Um, but I had a lower body temperature. So I have in the description link, cause I started using this myself, um, a, cause I wanted to find out if I was ovulating. I wanted to really, um, besides the ovulation P test kit, I wanted to check my, um, my body temperature. I was pretty shocked when I started using the basal thermometer, which is linked below here. Um, it just goes to Amazon for it. And I had a, pre a li pretty low body temperature. I mean, it was like, you know, 93, 92. I was like, that's a little bit odd. And I would have a tendency to kind of start getting cold a lot in my house. And I just thought, well, my daughter, my husband are just, you know, they're so hot natured. And, um, but this had started happening to me after I had been carnivore for about a year. Um, that I just started getting the cold all the time. When I got my blood test run, uh, run I found that my T3 was low. Um, so right when I switched to high fat, um, all of a sudden I wasn't hot all the time, but I stopped being cold all the time. I stopped having to have um, the blankets all over myself, all that stuff. And okay, let me see. Becky says, orthostatic hypertension is when blood pressure dropping when you stand up. Okay, yeah. That's, I mean, that's probably, that was what was happening to me probably because I felt like I was going to pass out. And that can also be histamine intolerance as well. That's what I talked about with, uh, with Dr. Becky Campbell recently. So that's possible also. Um, but as soon as I upped my fat and quit doing like super, super high protein carnivore um, and not fasting anymore, that being cold all the time went away. But having low T T3 and being cold all the time is a sign that your metabolism is slow um, or it's slowing down. It's not, a, it's not a good thing. And I think we pathologize that as women, a lot of us, you know, I'm cold or I need a jacket or like, it's just a thing. Like, and I, I never really looked deeper, never really thought about it until I started just having these issues. Um, this is another big one that I had no idea had anything to do with metabolism. Um, after about a year being like super high protein carnivore, I noticed that my, um, and this has always been a problem for me. So this is just something I've had my whole life, but it got worse. Um, when I was doing like a super high protein version is that my heels and my feet started cracking all the time. Like all the time, my heels and my feet were cracking and um, dry skin, uh, dry hair, brittle nails and, and all of that is actually a sign that number one, your liver is not working properly. And then number two, um, that your metabolism is not working properly. So if you're, ha if you have dry skin on, especially on your feet, on those heels, if your heels are cracking a lot, um, your skin is supposed to, that cell turnover is supposed to happen like every it's supposed to happen quickly. So you're not supposed to accumulate a bunch of dry skin. So if you have a bunch of dry skin, especially on your heels, your feet, number one, your liver's probably not optimally working and um, your metabolism is slow. 
Um, so that was another thing that happened to me now with high fat carnivore. And I didn't even realize this until a couple days ago. Um, since we've had this whole thing going around, which I mentioned at the very beginning of, um, the live stream, I haven't been able to go get a pedicure and I was like reliant on my pedicures, you know, to keep my feet looking decent. I haven't had a pedicure. My feet are like baby soft and I know it's because I'm eating all that fat. Um, okay. Michelle says, these are literally all the issues I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. So, you know, when we have these issues, like, you know, the cold all the time, the dry skin, the brittle nails, the brittle hair, um, all those types of things is just your body giving you information. It's giving you a signal saying like, you know what, something's not right. We need to stop and we need to reformulate. Now, some, <laughs> some carnivores I think are starting to become a little bit like vegans. I know I might get like wrapped or snapped for saying that. Um, but some carnivores are just like, getting to be super dogmatic about this stuff. And when people, this is this is the last thing that I want to do when people start having issues, like I was having all these issues and I was thinking, mm, and then my A1C went up. Um, and, and I was like, why is my, my fasting glucose was like in the hundreds, which is not normal. I know people on my old videos, people have commented, oh, hundreds and nineties is normal for fasting glucose. Well, not if you're not eating carbs, not if you're fasting, not if you're doing all the stuff that everyone's telling you to do, it is not normal. Um, it is a sign of insulin resistance. It is a pure sign of insulin resistance. It is not normal. Um, so I don't want to be, so I don't know if you guys can hear that. Can y'all hear the dinging from my computer? Um, type yes in the chat. I'm getting a bunch of text messages from my family. Apparently, um, somebody tested positive for this thing that we know, and now everyone's running amok. Um, tell me in the chat if you guys can hear the the dings going, okay, you can hear it. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone's, I don't know how to turn that off on my laptop. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And um, YBE says, I couldn't stand to be on Facebook groups because of the carny bullies. Yes. Okay. That is exact. Okay. Everyone says, yes, you can hear my texting. I'm sorry. Sorry, y'all. Hopefully they're going to stop. Um <laughs> Yeah, the carny bullies of like, no, your problems are not valid. Eat more meat. Shut up. <laughs> like, they're so mean. Um, and that's a problem. Like, that's a problem. If you're so dogmatic about the way that you eat that you can't listen to somebody having a problem, that's messed up. That's screwed up. And I could, that's why I couldn't be in a lot of those Facebook groups is because they were bullies and they were mean. And just this week, you guys, I've gotten messages. <laughs> Thank you guys for, we just ignore it. Thank you for ignoring my texting messages. Hopefully they will all chill out now. Um, but I've gotten two messages just this week. And I get messages like this all the time uh, that people are going to the emergency room for electrolyte imbalance, that they're having like severe issues for um, electrolyte balance. Yeah. And this is someone says eating more meat will not flush heavy metals <laughs> or glyphosate. No, eating more meat. Um, yeah, it was the same way when I was a raw vegan. It's not a religion. Exactly. People are taking this as too much of a religion. And yeah, the thing that I'm trying to promote out here on my channel and say is that sometimes we do need extra support. Sometimes we do have to tweak things a little bit. It's okay if you if you don't want to do carnivore. I talked to a girl this week. She did like a pick my brain session. Now, I don't do formal coaching or anything like that, but I do... Um, you know, I will let people do video chat with me and ask me questions because sometimes my DMs get so flooded and I can't deal with it. Um, that's why I do these live streams every week so people can really come on and ask me questions. Um, but this girl was like, I really want to eat vegetables. I really crave vegetables. And I was like, honestly, like, if the, if you're not reacting to them, if they're low, and please don't call the carnivore police for me saying this, but I'm like, if they're low anti-nutrient vegetables and you enjoy them, then why not? You know, like what, what's the deal? Like what are you, what's you, what are you trying to accomplish being carnivore? I know for me, what I'm trying to accomplish for being carnivore is an elimination diet to get my hormones balanced. And what I'm talking about today, this whole thing of getting my metabolism working again. 
And the way that I do that might work for you, but the way that I do that may not work for you at all. So um, it's definitely not a religion. And someone's asking, I always get the cheese questions. Everyone always wants to know about cheese. I don't eat cheese. I'm, <laughs> I'm reading the comments as I'm talking here. I don't eat cheese because cheese causes gut problems for me. Um, even with all the gut healing protocols I've done. Um, what's up? Thank you for the, for the much love. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's not so black and white. So, all right, let me get to some of this other stuff. Um, I want to talk about insulin resistance and insulin resistance is the number one reason why your metabolism is slow. Um, number one reason. And this is the problem that I ran into. Like the title of this video is can the carnivore diet heal your metabolism? And I think that for some people, if they do carnivore diet with like just a lot of meat and don't really do a lot of fat and they're not prioritized, you know, like you might, it may not, it may cause things to be worse. And for some people, if you do a ton of fasting, um, it could cause things to be worse. So for me, I have found that my metabolism is healing because number one, I'm not cold all the time. I just had my T3 retested. It's gone back up. It's not low anymore. My skin and hair, everything is luscious and full and uh, my feet aren't cracking, which is a freaking miracle. Uh, my resting heart rate's in a good place and I'm not craving food. I'm not hungry all the freaking time like I was. Um, so I know that what I'm doing right now is working for my metabolism. The other thing that I've talked about a million times is the fact that my cycle is on time and I'm ovulating again. Um, so, you know, the way that I do this, I'm not saying everyone else has to do it, but it's helping me to heal. It's helping my body to heal. And I'm getting clear data, clear signal through continuing to test my A1C through Let's Get Checked. Um, you know, and I did have some, my kidney numbers, not my kidney numbers. We've, we've talked about the kidney thing <laughs> ad nauseum. Um, but my liver numbers were not optimal. And I know that's probably because a lot of drinking and a lot of sugar causing fatty liver. Now my liver enzymes have actually improved a bit since switching over to a high fat carnivore. I haven't talked about the liver so much cause I've been trying to wrap my head around it and kind of figure it out. But, um, my liver enzymes having improved and gone up and gotten better. I'm also doing some outside the box stuff that has nothing to do with food for my liver, like uh, castor oil packs on my liver. Those are amazing and they feel really good. Um, let's see some of these questions. I like this from carnivorous beast. I agree, Sarah. I love eating carnivore, but my partner likes to include some vegetables and fruits. Yeah. And if you don't react to those foods, then why not? You know, then then go for it. This is, this is not a religion. This is not like, this is a healing protocol. And when people start to make food a religion and they start to bully other people, oh my God, you ate an avocado. Like you're not a carnivore. Like forget it. Like a video I'm going to probably make um, close to this, the end of this week is like, why I'm keeping the name carnivore yogi if I quit carnivore. Now, I don't have plans to quit carnivore right now, but I'm not going to tie myself into it and chain myself to it. Um, it's helping me a lot right now, so I'm going to stick with it. All right, so let me look. You guys feel free to ask me questions as I go along here. I have a ton of questions from Instagram because um, I talked on my stories yesterday a little bit about this metabolism thing. And also, you know, just jump in and ask me a question if something that I have said is a little confusing because I know I get a little spastic between um, reading the <laughs> comments and talking to you guys. And I love this what um, uh, VKC says, hate the dogmatic nonsense. Glad that behavior is being called out. Yeah, it's stupid. It's dumb. <laughs> It's just dumb. Um, okay. So how did you, here's a question from somebody on Instagram. How did you distinguish metabolic health symptoms versus life stressors? So life stress is very, it's like key. And what happens to wreck your body is this elevation of cortisol. So the elevation of cortisol is going to affect all systems. It's going to affect your hormonal system. It's really going to tap your adrenals. So your adrenals make those sex hormones. Your adrenals are so responsible for so many things. And something I learned this week is that if your adrenals are tapped out, um, your body is going to be way more susceptible to viruses. So if you already have a virus in your body and your adrenals get tapped out, um, that virus can wake up 
and take over and start wreaking havoc on your body. So, um, you know, for me, I know I have a certain level, a certain amount of chronic stress in my life that I'm still working on managing and I always will. Uh, but clearly I know if my feet are cracking and bleeding, um, if I'm cold all the time, um, that that's not good, right? I know that's not good. Let's see. Uh, all right. So here's some more questions. Do you think you reset your me me metabolic rate by adding fat and also adding calories? Um, I think that that helps, but I think essentially what you really have to do to reset your metabolic rate is to lower insulin. And we don't talk, I, I wish I had talked about this a little earlier in the video, this whole, the role of insulin, because there's not a keto mojo for insulin. There's insulin is different than glucose. And what we don't realize, and you know, that we've been, and, we can become insulin resistant, I think, even on um, carnivore diets. And I know that's kind of controversial, but people eating um, a ton of protein and not enough fat, you can become insulin resistant because it's spiking your um, insulin. So this is a thing and I'm going to, it's the insulin index. Boop. I will um, see if I can pop a link below this video to that and to this. And I will also, um, I think I'm going to post this on my Instagram, but essentially, um, anytime your insulin is high, right, it's going to, it's going to go up a little bit after you eat, right? Anytime you eat, it's going to go up. Um, but there are certain foods that are going to spike your insulin more. So number one here at the top, butter, 2% spike, olives, olive oil, 3%, coconut nut oil, which I don't eat, 3%. Um, so you can see, and I wish that beef fat was on here so we could see what beef fat would do because that's my main source of food is the beef suet. But guess how much of a, an insulin, where beef is on this insulin index, you guys. Beef is a 51% increase, right? So um, eating, you know, <laughs> a pound of steak at one meal is really going to spike your insulin. And how do you know for you if you're eating too much steak or too much protein at one meal um, or a sign of insulin resistance that you're tired after your meal, you're exhausted after your meal, you have to take a nap after your meal. <laughs> Someone says, that's why I only eat Crisco. That's funny. That's why I only eat Crisco one tablespoon at a time. That's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's why I eat a ton of beef suet and I prioritize fat over protein. I still eat a good an, an amount of protein that keeps muscle on my body because that's another thing that's going to affect your metabolism is the muscle on your body. So if you um, are rapidly losing muscle or you're not doing any resistance training or any kind of strength training at all, um, that's also going to lower your metabolic rate. So you know, we got to look at this insulin index because the number one thing that's going to drive your hormones and it's going to affect your set weight because we all have this set weight, right? Have you ever got, I'm having this issue. This is why I'm kind of like really working on this. There's a certain weight that I just can't seem to get below. Um, <laughs> that's insulin resistance. That's a problem with your insulin being too high. So um, the other thing I want to talk about, because somebody tagged me in this post before, um, I print. I feel. I thought I printed it out. Maybe I didn't print it out. Uh, um, let me see if I can find it. I'm seeing if you guys are typing me any questions in the meantime. Somebody uh, tagged me in this post about uh, fasting, and um, I know it's very, very controversial. This whole fasting thing. Trust me. But here's the biggest. Here's where I'm at with it. All right, let me look up this post. I'm not going to put it on here because I don't want to call this person out because I don't want to start beef with anybody. Like, I'm just not, <laughs> I'm just not doing that. But what this person was saying, like fasting and metabolism um, is talking about how fasting increases your metabolism. Okay. Maybe for some people it did, but for me, it actually slowed my metabolism down. You know why? And it, I can actually take this person's post apart and tell you why. Your body activates the following during a fast. Cortisol. Oh, you don't want a butt ton of, <laughs> almost cursed. I'm doing so good not to curse on my channel. You don't want a ton of cortisol in your body all the time. A little bit's good, but he, this person's talking about cortisol being a good thing during a fast. 
Um, and then it said some other things in here, but the, the lowest thing on this list is epinephrine or adrenaline. Guess what causes your insulin to spike, you guys? Cortisol and epinephrine. So, you know, and I don't, I'm not refuting the data around fasting, but I am saying that most of it hasn't been done on women of reproductive age. It's been done on um, men and uh, postmenopausal women. So we just don't know enough about it to be going out here and preaching and saying it's the most amazing thing in the world. Um, let's see. Let me see some of these questions. Yeah, someone says, I just finished wearing a CGM from Nutrisense and eating suet did not raise glucose reading at all. Yes. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is glucose and insulin are different. So some things will, your glucose won't change by your insulin's going up. Because when I would eat a big steak, um, sometimes with that CGM on, my insulin would kind of stay in the, or my, my glucose would stay in the 80s, right? But I'd get really tired and my blood glucose would shoot up overnight. Um, which is basically saying gluconeogenesis. You don't want your blood glucose going into the hundreds at night. Let's see some of these other questions. I can't even think about eating solid fat, butter, tallow, et cetera. How do you, so you might have a gallbladder issue um, because I love fat. It makes me feel satiated. It helps my brain. It's amazing. So you may have a gallbladder issue. You may want to supplement with some ox bile. Um, if the thought of eating fat makes you feel nauseous or you just can't think about it, um, that could be seriously a gallbladder issue. Your body trying to protect you from doing that. So you may want to see if taking some ox bile might help um, with that. Let's see. Do, do, do. do you use ACV? Um, I've actually just started testing out ACV because ACV, um, I, believe it or not, I actually have some in this um container right now because that actually does lower your insulin. Um, I'm testing it out because ACV um, can uh, cause a histamine reaction. So I'll let y'all know if I don't get a massive headache or itching or <laughs> other weird histamine reaction from it, I'll let you guys know. But ACV can be very helpful. Let me see some of these other questions. I'd like to see the index, but I don't use Instagram. If you could post it in YouTube link, that'd be great. All right. I will see what I can do. Red wine five. Um, Becky says eating suet as you speak. Hell yes. I love my suet. And some people are like gross, can't do it, but I'm like, I'm all about it. Um, eating disorders and fasting for me is a disaster. Yeah, that's another thing. Guess what? If you're stressing out about it also, you're not going to get any benefit. If you're like reliving your eating disorder and or you binge afterwards, you're not going to get any benefit from it at all. Let's see. Some of these other ones. Uh, offset cortisol spikes with glycine and or CBD oil. They use the same receptors. Yeah, I've actually just started taking some glycine at night before bed. Um, because the glycine can, again, lower your cortisol, uh, help you with those insulin spikes, as well as it will increase your, um, or it's supposed to increase your um, antidiuretic hormone, which is the hormone that you need so you don't get up to pee 100 times at night, which is something, um, I'm not getting up to pee 100 times a night, but I'm still getting up to pee twice. So I'm trying the glycine before bed to see if that helps. So I'll let you guys know. Let's see. <laughs> all the fat team. I crave fat. I crave fat too. I mean, when people are like, how do you get all your fat in? I'm like, how do I not? Like I have to control myself. <laughs> I have to weigh it out. I have like a little scale to weigh it out. So I don't go, um, crazy. Um, yeah. And I'm used to coconut oil and nuts as fat, just not the mouthfeel of solid fat. It does take some, uh, uh, uh getting used to, um, for sure. Let's see. This is a good question. Do some supplements raise blood sugars? I think yes, especially. So when I talked to Dr. Dr. Becky Campbell um, last week, if you guys haven't watched that, that interview is up. Um, then what she was saying is that some people with severe histamine intolerance, they have to take like it, not a supplement that has like a bunch of stuff in it, like one thing at a time. You have to be really careful because um yeah, if you're having a histamine reaction to something, it will spike your blood sugar. It will lift up your blood sugar. Let's see. Let's see. Yep, a huge stick at night equals 
120 to 130 glucose through the nights. Yeah, so Becky also, and she's a carnivore coach. She's over with MeetRx, and she's also in Steph's keto group. So she's just like out there learning. She's got a YouTube channel with some awesome recipes on it. So y'all go visit that. Um, but she also wore the continuous glucose monitor that I wore and um, had the same experience with those blood sugars going up overnight. And you don't want to see that. You want your blood sugars to be kind of humming along in, you know, 70s, 80s overnight. You don't want them to go too high, but you also don't want them to go too low because that's a sign of hypoglycemia, which is basically another precursor or sign of insulin resistance. Let's see. And I dip my steak in raw, fresh egg yolks. So amazing. I love that. I do too. I love raw, fresh egg yolks. It's so good. Let's see. Okay. What do you think about adding stearic acid to foods? Brad Marshall and Dr. Saladino have been talking a lot about this and reduction in visceral fat. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I know nothing about that. But I'll have to do some research now because it's interesting. Um, let's see. Do you think my ocular migraines could be caused by a histamine issue? Very possible. Very, very possible. Um, my daughter had horrible headaches until we, number one, took her strict keto, and then number two, really dialed in her histamine issues. So um, one of the biggest signs of histamine intolerance is a migraine or headaches. Let's see. Chicken or turkey seems to raid, raise blood sugars. Histamine? No, it's um, more so because of where they fall on this insulin index. So chicken and turkey are up here. They're actually less than beef, which is interesting, um, but they are significant. So um, turkey and chicken are at 23 and 24% and it could be a uh, spike in your insulin. And sometimes insulin, it's it's a weird thing to, <laughs> to do, um, is to understand the whole insulin blood glucose thing. But uh, a lot of sometimes the blood sugar and the insulin will both go up. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's probably just a super high amount of protein and also not enough um, saturated fat with it. Let's see some of these. How do we combat dawn effect on blood sugar? So, okay, for me, getting my fats above 200 grams a day and my protein under 60 grams a day stopped the dawn effect because I thought it was just a normal thing. And I'd wake up every day when I had the continuous glucose monitor on and um, it was like 100. And I was like, oh my God, or even just like 95 in the 90s. And I was like, what's oh, the dawn effect? But when I took my fats way up and took my protein down, now whenever I test my blood sugar first thing when I wake up, because I do quite often still, it's like low 80s, high 70s. I would say it's average between 77 and 83 um, every morning when I first wake up. So I just had to adjust those macros. Let's see. Okay. Sometimes I crave salted butter, but I haven't tried suet yet. So I'm, yeah, CGMs are very, very helpful. And someone asked which CGM did, I think CAM means CGM, right, Roy? Um, I use NutriSense. There's a link for it, I believe, in the information section of this video um, to get the CGM that I used. Now, you can get it just a two-week package. I think a two-week package is plenty because they are pricey. Um, or you can ask your doctor to prescribe one for you. My doctor would not prescribe one for me because I'm not diabetic and my A1C was like not super high. It was higher than I wanted it to be. But my doctor was like, no, you're not diabetic. You're not obese. Like, no. So that's why I went with NutriSense. Let's see. I hope that answered your question. Do you eat before bed to help with Dawn Effect? No. Um, if I'm really hungry before bed, I will, well, I guess I kind of do, I will have like an ounce of beef suet with some salt on it. And I'll do that up to like eight o'clock at night. That's not every night. That's probably like, you know, two out of seven nights a week. But I do that. If I'm super, super hungry, then I will do that. And it's okay. But I'm not eating a bunch of protein before bed. Definitely not eating carbs. Um, so some people do have to do that. Let's see. Will the beef suet melt away in the air fryer? Um, yes, not all of it, but it will, uh, now Becky, who's on here, Becky Niles, she puts her suet in the air fryer. I like to just eat mine raw. That's how I like it the best, but yeah, it'll melt a little bit of it away, but not all of it. 
Let's see. Have you compared your well-being with and without electricity near you? Um, so I have been turning off the Wi-Fi at night for a couple months now in the house. No electronics allowed in the bedroom. I'm pretty strict about that. And I actually do sleep better without all those things around me, for sure. Um, that's I live in a pretty... Um, what's it called? Like urban area. So I can't escape some stuff. Um, let's see. Is anyone else a wuss about testing blood? I actually fainted when I first tried and put the monitor in the closet. <laughs> oh man. My husband used to, I used to pass out when I gave blood every single time, but, um, with a, let's get checked. It's just a finger prick. Um, the links I have in this, in this, uh, information section. Sorry, my brain's short circuiting, trying to read the comments and staying on online also. Um, but yeah, some people, they just, they'll pass out. Um, this is very sweet. Thank you very much. You look beautiful. Your face seems less puffy. Thank you, Kelly. And are you feeling better? Yes, I'm feeling better. I've, you know what, like everyone's having, not everyone, a lot of people are having a lot of health issues because of stress right now. And I'm not um, exempt from that at all. Um, I've definitely had some stress related stuff going on in my body, not feeling well, inflammation. And I know it's just purely stress. So what I've been trying to do right now is just keep my stress as low as possible, meditate, um, every day, twice a day, do yoga. I've been trying these castor oil packs on my liver. That's helping, um, taking a warm bath, Epsom salt bath. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely feeling better getting my stress lower. All right, you guys, I'm looking for more questions. Let me look at some of these Instagram questions. I probably won't get to all of them. There's a lot. Um, Oh, this one is how has your mood changes stabilized, etc. Um, so I am definitely a lot more even keeled with the fat. Now, when I was doing like a like a lot of protein and not really a ton of fat, um, I would get hangry, and that's also a sign of insulin resistance if you're getting hangry um, and just kind of like snippy. Like I'm a lot more even, like I would kind of get miffed a little bit when people talk about the carnivore Zen and that they talk about carnivore Zen in the same groups that you get kicked out of for um, telling what kind of problems you're actually having, which is pretty ironic. Um, but I've definitely stabilized out a lot more. I don't, I don't fly off the handle as much. Let's see. Okay. And Becky says, oop, sorry. D, go from frozen slabs directly into air fryer helps to prevent too much rendering. Okay, so yeah, for suet, because that's like one of my FAQs is the raw suet. How do I, I just eat it, but Becky likes to put it in the air fryer. So it seems like she's putting in into the air fryer from frozen. All right, let me see some of these other questions. <laughs> Everyone always wants to know. And I, think I, already, I already answered this. How much fat do you consume? My heart rate is also in the 30s and 40s. I'm athletic, but not a competitive athlete. Um, so again, around 200 grams a day, sometimes more than that. But that's about how much I, I do. What types of seasoning do you use? Does it have to be only salt and pepper? I'm diabetic, so trying to keep carbs down. Um, I would definitely, if you're diabetic, I would definitely recommend doing a high fat version of carnivore to watch the protein because not enough. I feel like not enough. And I didn't, I'm not answering your question yet. I'm going to, but not enough people are talking about the importance of being in ketosis if you're diabetic. Um, but I only really use Redmond salt. Like that's it. Um, I don't use a bunch of other stuff. I know some people that use like liquid aminos um, and they do really well with those. A lot of those people have come from keto and they use the liquid aminos and they do really well with those. But um, I just use Redmond salt. I've never been a big seasoning person, so I don't really miss it that much. But um, yeah, I, I just really enjoy the Redmond salt. Let's see. And then, okay, so this is one more question from Instagram. 
it says ways to quickly empty your histamine bucket. So your histamines, like I mentioned, that could be spiking your insulin um, if you're having histamine reactions to everything. So uh, ways to empty your histamine bucket, you want to go on a low histamine protocol, such as uh, you could do carnivore, but you want to make sure that you're not eating ground meats. Um, those typically will cause a reaction with someone. You want to rotate your meats, try different cuts of meat, don't always eat the same thing, and eat fresh. You know, you got to eat fresh stuff. You can't cook something, put it in the fridge for a day, and eat a bunch of leftovers off of it, which can make it challenging. So if I make a roast, you know, three pound roast, usually I will, um, will all eat it at one meal and then I freeze it right away. So you can freeze stuff too. Um, and then you got to support your liver for histamines, liver support, very important. So you can eat liver. Um, you can do like liver detox by using the castor oil packs. Um, that was one of the things that Dr. Campbell told me. Um, so you got to support your liver. Taking liver, eating liver is a really amazing way to support your liver to give you all those essential nutrients. Let's see. And then someone says, Carnivorous Bee says, I use Mediterranean sea salt and I put Himalayan pink sea salt in my water in the morning. Yeah. And that's a good one, too. I mean, any sea salts are really good. You just don't necessarily want to use those table salts. Um, those are not necessarily the best things for you, but Mediterranean, I've heard Celtic, um, sea salts, really good pink Himalayan Redmond's. Uh, I love Redmond's, but a salt with some minerals in it as well. All right, y'all, do y'all have any more questions? It's 46 minutes in and I said I was going to keep it at 40 minutes, but I just love talking and hanging out with you guys. It's so much fun <laughs> that I always end up going over what I thought I was going to go over. Let's see. Oh, someone here also says, um, gained five pounds of weight on a high fat carnivore and li but libido improved. What are your thoughts? Um, so I think that's good. If your libido is improving, that's huge. Like that's really good. Low libido is another sign that your metabolism is in the toilet. Um, so if you don't have a sex drive, that's not normal. Like that's not a good thing. Um, it means your hormones are not optimal and that your, um, you're, 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 you're not in a good place. <laughs> so sometimes you will gain some weight when you switch to the high fat carnivore diet because you're not adapting. Um, your blood sugars are probably still too high. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so, so, so much. Your videos are really helpful. Thank you so much. And thank you, Carnivorous Beast. It was awesome to see you guys. And um, feel free to comment, you know, uh, under the video if there's another topic you want me to talk about. These just kind of come to me over the weekend usually. I'm like, huh, maybe I'll talk about this this week. Um, so I'm open to different topics, discussing different stuff. I just love to come on here at least once a week. Oh, here, let me answer this one because this is good. Uh, what recommendation, re recommendations for swelling ankles in the heat when you're on your feet all day? Um, you probably, if you're having swelling, you may need more. And I'm saying may because I don't know for sure. Um, potassium is very important. So some people really do need to supplement with potassium. Um, I supplement with potassium citrate. Um, I, people will say you can get plenty of potassium from meat, but the meat is not... Um, <laughs> It's not what it says it is. It is not. If the meat was not raised on um, land that has nutrient dense soil, if your steak, if your steak, if your cow is not eating nutrient dense soil that has those minerals, that has the potassium in it, um, it is not going to give you potassium. Our soil is extremely depleted. This is why I um, buy all my meat really now from white oak pastures because I've been there. The soil is beautiful. It's take, well taken care of. It's carbon negative. It's an amazing place. So I know that if I make a roast and I drink the broth off of that roast, I will be getting potassium from the broth. But if I go to the grocery store and buy a conventional roast and make a broth from that, I don't know what I'm getting. I don't really know. And it's more than likely not going to do what the um, broth from White Oak will do. Let's see. All right, guys. Thank you. I hope that was I hope this was helpful. And um, it's always fun to hang out with you guys and uh, catch the replay if you came in late. And I will talk with you guys again next week on the live stream. All right.
Be good. <laughs> All right.